Hello, now this is part of my series of videos where I'm explaining how you get from something like this, some printed topper sheets, maybe the round version, some backing papers, to end up with something like this. Okay, so I've made this card as a sample to begin with. Okay, but I'm doing a whole series of these using uh, various craft CDs and USBs and DVD ROMs. Okay, so the one I'm doing today is from a Creative Crafting World DVD ROM and it's um, artwork by Bree Merrin. Um, so I will put the details of that in the video description. And they will do a blog post as well. Haven't decided yet. Okay. Might do a blog post to bring the series of videos together. So, I've got my pattern papers and I've got my toppers and I've got my foils. Now, when we're doing this, I'm foiling with the back of cutting dies. Now, if you haven't watched my introduction for this playlist, please go back and watch it. I'll explain about this. Okay. So I'm using normal cutting dies. I'm going to be foiling with the back of them. Now, sometimes this works better with some dies than others. Um, and I can't pin down exactly what the difference is every time. So sometimes it's the foil, sometimes it's the cardstock, sometimes I think it's the dies. And it's just the way, way they're, they're made and perhaps how rigid they are. I don't know. So I always do a test with my foil and the card, this is the same card as I've printed on, and my card and my die to start with, okay? So I did a, a test for some of the gold, some gold foil I was going to use and it didn't work very well. So then I've changed and I'm actually using Couture Creations foils for this and I'm going to be using this gold, which is their gold foil mirror finish, which is the paler of their two golds. And I picked that because it matches the mirror card I've got which means I can actually use some mirror card as well for my outer layers because you can only go so big with the gold press and foil it's great but if I want a really big matte layer I'm not going to get it um, with the gold press and foil so I've got some mirror card and then I love this chocolate copper colour um, and I thought that would go really well with the tones in my fox. So if I bring those over, you can see the kind of tones that we want. And I think that'll work really nicely um, as, as a contrast. So then I need to think about my design and what I'm going to use where. So I've done my test and I, I did my test using one of my nesting dies. Um, I chose that one because that's probably going to end up being my sentiment, but I don't want to cut it out yet. OK, but I do need to show you what to do. and I'm going to do that when I foil my topper. OK, so I think I'm going to end up with a topper that's going to be foiled and then set against a piece of this. So I think what I want to do, because I think I want a gold edge on this, I think I want a copper edge on my topper. And I'm going to do what I did in this one, combine two die sets. So I'm going to do the, the topper as a square. So it doesn't really matter what set of square dies you've got, so long as the cutting edge pulls nicely in the middle of the frame. So let me get out oh, the die that I've got a set of nesting dies here. I think I might want that one. So if I look here and get the camera to focus, you can see that the cutting edge is nicely in the middle of the frame and that means I will get a piece of foiling the width of the frame that's inside of the cutting edge. Okay, so it falls really thickly to start with and then you end up cutting half of it off. 
So let's think about which which of these toppers from the sheets I'm going to use. I was going to do round and then I printed it out round and then I thought, no, I want to do it the same as I've done that. So I've used the other side and printed it square. Um, and I dare say one or other of these will get used to make some more cards at some point. So get a die that's about the right size and figure out where you want to place it. So I've got that one. I'll decide how much of my fox I want. And whether or not I want it that big. So I could go for that one or I could go down the size and then have more of my backing paper showing. Yeah, and just so it's up to you. I think maybe I'm going to go for that size. Now these have got a line around them. So long as that gets at least covered up by my foil, it won't show. So I could go there. So this is going to be easier to work with if I if I cut it away from the sheet. So let me do that. And actually make sure I end up with neat edges. Do I need neat edges? No, I don't really for this. So I'm, I'm just going to cut this, this one that I want to use away from my sheet. I'm going to go a little bit so I cut part of the next one off I'm afraid because I, I need some space around it okay and that's all I need from that sheet unless I decide I'm going to use one of these sentiments so let's put that to one side and my backing paper for now So I've got my die, put it back on here, and in fact I know it is the same one as I used for the pheasant uh, because I marked the midpoints of the die and the marks are still there. I want to come about there I think. Okay, so I decided I'm going to do this in the copper. So I need some copper foil, it's chocolate copper, I love this colour. Great on masculine cards. And it nearly matches the fur around the fox's eyes. Now, I like to cut the middle out of my frill, so I'm just going to get a cutting mat out. And I can also use that to measure my die. I have to cut it the right way around. So this is, so that's just over eight centimetres. So I don't want a huge amount extra. It does help if the foil will stay, sit still for you. Let's try it that way around. I do find the best thing for cutting foil is a large pair of good sharp scissors. So, you know, something like a, I think these are probably classed as a size that would be dressmaking shears. And the fact that they've got this curve on them means I can get them flat without having to bend my wrist awkwardly. So having cut my foil, I'm then going to cut, cut it to size and cut the middle out of it. Now you're probably thinking that's a, an awful lot of work, what's the point? But it saves the piece of foil in the middle and it saves me getting any overfoiling on my um, nicely printed topper. So I'm just going to take off the excess and take this middle part out. It's a, it's a square die and I'm a few millimetres, maybe about a sixteenth of an inch from the inside edge. I need a bit more tape on that side. It's easy if you just have it taped down. 
hand. You just need to use a craft knife. Doesn't matter if your line wiggles a bit. Doesn't even matter if you bump into the side of the edge of the die. Um, it just means you'll need to be more careful when you're um, lining it up on your topper to follow it. Now I've just noticed my go press has turned itself off, so I'm just going to turn it back on. Now I'm just going to peel this off. You can see that didn't take long to cut it out. And you do get quicker with practice. And it means I've got a nice pristine piece of foil here to use for foiling something else. It is best if you make sure you haven't got anything sticky on the back of your die. So it also means I can see where I'm putting my foil. So uh, as I say, it doesn't matter if that line will be there as long as it's covered by the going to be covered by the foil. So if you need to, I've got some marks on the edges of my die here. So if I if I think I'm going to have a problem lining it up. What I can do is take a pencil and just put some lines from there going outwards to the edge that I can line up with. Ah, I need to come down a bit. Let me rub those out. And then I can put my foil on. And I might end up with my foil over the edge of my die. There's my mark there. Let's bring that out to the edge a bit further. So I just want to line up. It doesn't matter that I can't see the third one. because I've got the two side ones to get the die at the right height and lined up. I need to come down a bit more. Four needs to come down much further. If you're having trouble moving your foil, if you've got something you can dampen your finger on, a baby wipe or a piece of wet kitchen paper, something like that, then, then that can be quite useful for just sliding your foil about. Uh, it's warm here, my hands. I've, I've got enough cleverness to them today, so I don't need that. I think that will be there. And then I'm going to tape it down in a couple of places there okay so I have taped mm, am I am I a bit wonky I think I'm a little bit wonky I'm just going to straighten that so now I quite often find that I stick things down 
I pick them up and think, no, it's not straight. <laughs> I'm just going to release that piece to make sure that the foil isn't puckered underneath it where I've moved it. Okay, so I've got my foil and my die. Now I need my go press and foil. So let me explain to you how I do this. Now you can use your Couture Creations conversion plate, which is a thick metal plate for doing this, and just close your lid and do it, but the dies will scratch your lid. Okay? So what I've been trying to find is a way to do it without scratching your lid, and I've found one. So I've got on here, I just need a silicone mat because this is hot, a thin metal shim. Okay, it's only 0.5 millimeters thick. It's the sort of thing you use for your die cutting machine, if you're cutting fabric, that kind of thing. Okay, and I've got a second one of those that I'm going to put on in a minute. So I'm going to take my die now, I'm going to put it this way up. So, the rule here is you always have your cutting side up. Okay, so that goes on there, and the the heat's going to come through that plate, through the card, and into the foil, and then the die is going to apply the pressure from above. Okay, rather from rather than from underneath, which is how it works normally. Okay, so that's going to go there, and that really is why you need the metal sheet because otherwise you don't get that firm pressure from underneath. Okay, and then I've got the second one is exactly the same. I'm going to put that on top. I'm going to add some card shims. Now, I've been practicing with this and I've worked out that if I have two layers of two pieces of card that's folded, so four layers of 250 GSM card, and 250 GSM card is what I've printed my toppers on, so it's that kind of weight, it's topper weight card rather than the slightly heavier weight that you might use for a card blank. So those go on there and I close the lid and then I need to make sure it's all nicely heated up. So that's going to need to heat and I'm probably going to give it at least a minute to make sure that that's thoroughly heated through. So if my go press and foil were sitting there at green and I put it on, I'd wait for it to go back to flashing red and then let it heat up again so it's flashing red at the moment and wait until it turned green um, and that could be up to a minute okay but as I put it back on it's gone to flashing red so probably by the time I finish talking it's had enough time okay so let me move my card out of the way and move my camera so you can see me rolling it through. I'm using a Big Shot Plus. And can I just say that, you know, if you've got a different foiling platform to me, um, then you should be able to apply these techniques as well. But just be mindful of what you're doing and maybe the limitations of the equipment you're using. So, you know, you, you different thicknesses, different pressures, and I can't work that out for you because... I've got the go press and foil and I haven't got the other machines right so let's roll this through it feels quite tight as I'm rolling it through but it, I'm not having to force it really I'm just got a firm pressure feels much the same as it does if I'm using a cut and foil die. I'm just not cutting at this particular time. Okay, now this bit's important because I put that on onto my go press at an angle. Now I'm just going to zoom, move the camera and zoom in a bit because I want to leave it on the heat while I'm doing this. Okay, I'm going to open the lid. I'm going to take my shims out. I'm going to get hold of my second metal plate. 
I'm going to turn this a quarter turn. So one of the points that was at the side is now at the top. And then I'm going to put my plate back on. It cools down quite quickly. And put my shims back on. And assuming that in the time I've taken to do that, the GoPress has decided if it needs more heat and has heated up, I'm going to roll it through. So. All right, there we are. Okay, so it gets a second roll. Take the shims off, take my second metal plate off, and grab my foiling. Okay, so that's been through. Okay, so now I'm going to carefully Take one piece of tape off. I just want to have a look and make sure it's foiled before I move everything. So I'm just going to try and make sure that stays stacked down and flip it, and flip it over. And just kind of peel up a corner and have a look. Hmm. I think that hasn't, that's not foiled terribly well. Maybe I didn't leave it to heat long enough for the first time. So I'm going to put that back down and I'm going to heat it and roll it again. Okay, I'm not going to make you watch this time. I'll come back to you when I've done that. Okay, so I've repeated that process again. Gave it a bit longer to heat. I haven't checked to see if it works yet. So let's have a look. So I'm going to peel one piece of tape again. Make sure the other one is stuck down. Yes, that is much better. Except for one corner. Okay, I've got a corner that isn't quite done. Okay, so I'm going to do it a third time. So bear with me again. Okay, let's see what we've got now. So let's lift it up, lift the foil. So, you're going to look at this and you're thinking, well, it's still not right. But actually, in my experience, let me zoom the camera in. There are, so there are some little bits missing. But by the time you've cut this out, I actually find they don't really notice. Okay, so there's some on the edge there. So you've got to remember, there's not going to be that great wide border. It's going to be a narrow border. So we'll see. So take the camera back to its normal zoom. No, wrong way. No, sorry. Right. So that is that. And then I need to cut it out. Get through that piece of tape before it causes me a problem. In fact, I need that to cut it out. So now what you do... I'm going to tilt the camera down and zoom it in a bit. Okay, so, right, so then you take your die and you put it directly over your foiling so you're covering all of your foiling. And you tape it down. Now I always try to tape on the outside of my die and I always try to tape in at least two places. Okay, so let me just grab my cutting plates. Put it back to normal. There we are. Right, 
So remembering I, I was printing on the back of another top of sheet, I'm going to put my die, because it's a square, just at an angle. And I've also got, I'm using a magnetic, magnetic platform here, I've got a piece of copy paper just over my cutting plate so that I don't get any marks on my nice topper. So now I've cut it out, you can see that you don't notice those tiny little bits of missing foil. So that's the top layer. Okay, so for the next layer down, let me think what I want. So I've got two papers and if I pull my card back here, I think what I want is my dark paper but cut with a fancy shape frame and some gold foil. Okay, so I need to sort myself out a piece of this that's the right width and cut it to size. And then get my foiling ready so I'm going to do that preparation and I'm going to show it to you when I'm ready to put the bits together and go on to the, the go press and foil um, and then show you once it once I've actually foiled it so bear with me for a few minutes or in fact it won't be any time at all for you it'll be a few minutes for me okay so I've cut a piece of my dark pattern paper a bit bigger than my die and I only cut off what I needed. I'm going to need some more of this in the background of my card. So I've made sure I've left as much as I can. So, again, I've trimmed my foil to size with my craft knife. I've cut the centre out. Now I need to put it onto my card. It's a square die, so obviously it doesn't matter which way up it is. But if you've got a pattern on your paper where it is going to matter, obviously be careful about that when you're placing your dies. If you're using something that's sort of an oblong or an oval that you know you need need an up and a down rather than a sideways. Right, so that goes on there. I'm going to tape it at the corners. Go put some foil over. So when I'm just crafting in my craft room, make sure that's zoomed right. Um, I don't keep lifting it off the base. I stand up and I lean over, but it's not so good on the camera. So I'm going to because I, this is quite a wide die. I'm going to put this on wait, this way up, just a very slight angle, and I might need to rotate it sort of several times to make sure it's foiled okay so second metal shim make sure that is still centered and then my card shims are buried here don't have a craft room I'm on my dining room table there's a selection of storage boxes around me okay so that goes back on the base And it is flashing red, but I'm going to leave it longer than that. I'm going to give it 
you know, plenty of time to warm up, probably through two cycles of warming. And then I'm going to roll it because I want to make absolutely sure that I get good foiling on this. OK, so I'll be back with you in a few minutes for me and a blink for you. OK, so that's been heated and rolled and turned and, and then I've, I've checked it. What I've done each time is I've just taken a piece of tape off and just lifted the die and the foil so I can just peep and turn this around so you can see. Just peep underneath to see if the foiling looks good. OK, so I've checked this and we're good to go. I just need to take all my tape off. Now, my foil has come away, but quite often it doesn't. And you can you can kind of tell if it, if it looks like it's adhered with practice. So. That's folded really nicely. Now I need to make sure I've got all the tape off my die and then cut it out. Because if I don't get all these bits of tape, let me just show you. If I don't get those bits of tape off the edges of my die, they're going to affect the, the texture of, of the, uh, under the die cap. They'll leave a mark. So I'm going to do that and cut this out. OK, so where are we up to with our card? So that piece and I've cut some mats and layers to go with it and I'm just going to find my card blank that I buried over here so I've got a card blank I've got some gold mirror card to go there so the idea is this so I'm going to have some gold mirror card I'm going to have this nice big piece that I've cut so that it will just have a little border of gold around the edge and then I'll have this piece that I've cut from the other pattern paper. And does that have a correct way up? I think it goes that way. I'm not sure it matters. Um, so that will go on top there. Now, on my pheasant card, I've got this strip across the middle here. Okay, and that's just some pattern paper and some mirror card. Okay, so that would need to go in next. I've got some offcuts of my pattern paper here that I can use for that. And my mirror card started off as an A4 sheet. So the bit I cut off is that piece. That's the cut to make the square. So that I will use for that piece that goes across the middle. Um, and that will be go across this piece. And then, yes, yeah, it's all sliding around. It's all very slippery. And then that can go on there. And my top one can go on the top. So it just needs that horizontal bit to break up all the, all the squares, really. So that's the next bit to do and the sentiment. So I've got the GoPress and foil warming up. OK. Um, and I need to decide how wide I want my, my strip for this. And in fact, I'm going to cut my pattern paper first. And then I'll cut my foil. Or mirror car stop slightly wider so let me just trim this up um, now I'm using my couture creations mini guillotine which I find gives me fabulous neat edges on everything but when I'm doing little strips like this the guard gets in the way so my answer to that is to use another piece of card and then I can line up that up with the measurement I want to use so if I want uh, one and a half inches maybe yeah i maybe make it one and a half inches i can put that in it's got a nice square end i can slide my card up against it and be sure that that's then straight and trim that i'm going to trim the the white bit off the end okay and then so if that was an inch and a half I want about a, an eighth of an inch more than that in the width of my mirror card. So again, so that was an inch and a half. Is that an inch and a half? Make sure I've got that right. Yep, that was an inch and a half. 
so if I want sixteenths of an inch maybe a bit more border on my mirror card I can put that on the measurement I want slide that in again that's going to be nice and straight make sure it's not snagging on the blade and now I've got my mirror card so before I stick that together let's just see how that's going to look Right, let me just get an idea so I do make everything and kind of do a dry fit before I stick anything together because otherwise sometimes you get to a point where you think I could have done with putting some foil on that but I've stuck it down now it's happened so I'm only it's only actually going to be I think the width of the lighter paper And I think that will break that up quite nicely. It's all a bit skew with. So it's not straight. Oops. But it will be something like that. So let me stick those, those together. So I'm going to use some double sided tape. Okay, uh, at the moment this is much longer than it needs to be. I'm going to put it together and then trim it afterwards once I've stuck it down on this piece. So, get that roughly where it needs to go. line this up at one end I don't know if you can use even the camera in on this because people always say to me how to get things straight over there just a little bit yeah okay so you can see the end of my card so I've got my double sided tape and I've just flipped the ends back at one end and I'm going to lay this down and line up the end and get it the distance I want either side and I'm just going to press down slightly at that end. Now, that lets me wiggle this quite a lot. So I can lay it down and make sure I've got an even border on either side. And press it down a bit more at this end. And then I need to hold it because it can still wiggle. You know, if I, if I move this end, it will still move a bit. And... So I'm holding it down one side and peeling part of the way along and then pressing that tape down. Okay, and then I'm going to come along a bit further. I just need to take the pressure off where the tape is. And that end is down and straight. Oops, and it's stuck to the mat. And then, camera up just a little bit. And then I can pull out the other piece of tape nothing can move now because it's stuck down on one side and there and that gives me that stuck down okay I'm going to trim that bit off the end because it's going to keep sticking to everything okay and then I'm going to get some more double sided tape Oops. and I'm going to go on the back of the mirror card Okay, 
and then I want to get this piece and I want to make sure I get this the right way up if it's got the right way up that way I think hmm. that way okay so decide which way is up and then it's going to go across the middle there now I like to use my craft ruler lots of different companies make these it's a acrylic ruler it's got a, a metal strip down one edge so if you're using a, a knife or a rotary cutter you don't damage the ruler but it's got grid lines on it okay which means I can put it down against the bottom edge of my card and line the bottom edge up with the grid lines now I do need to make sure this is in the middle now this is a 12 centimeter square and it's actually got a midline on it so I need to make sure that I get this in the middle and I get it level so once I've got it level what I might do is just add a little bit of tape on the corner there so that it doesn't move too easily and I will use another bit of tape on this piece of card to hold it still as well once well, so I've actually figured out where it's going. So, if I get some parallel lines there and I think that's about right. Let me just put a bit of tape there and then I'm going to just check that gap either side. And in fact, I might be better turning this round, thinking about it. Yeah, let's do it the other way around. Do that and put that lengthways. Do want it just overhanging a bit at one end so I can trim it off. I'm just gonna hold my card down there. And then I because I've got grid lines I can still make sure I'm finding the middle the middle of things. So I've got a midpoint marked and I can line my line that up in the center of my card okay and then I can line up my this piece in the middle of that and that's important because I'm going to put this on top and because it's got these notches if it's not in the middle it will show so So that's, to, so that's in the middle, that's in the middle. Okay, so at this end, it's where it should be. Okay, I'm going to put a piece of tape. Okay, and check the other end. Now, I haven't stuck it down yet, I know, I haven't peeled my tape off the back. I'm just getting an idea of where it will go. So, put that in the middle there. That there, that there. That will need to go over there. Yeah. to go there okay so I'm going to put a piece of tape on the back of this hold those two together at that end and then I can lift this end up like a hinge start peeling my double sided tape Or if you want to, you can just do it by eye. Don't have to measure things. But sometimes it, it's worth working out where the middle is before you go any further. So, so now, so long as I make sure it's level, it will be in the centre. So. So I 
can bring my ruler up to that end and level it. And then stick that end down. And then I'm going to turn it round because I'm right handed and I want to pull the tape that way. And I'm going to make sure this stays level while I'm peeling my tape. I'm going to get rid of my tape on the back because that's going to get in my way now. using the lines on the ruler at the bottom to make sure that's straight. I can hold it still now. Press that down end, end down well. And same as when I was sticking to the mirror card. I can come across. Take the other one out. Okay. And now I turn it over to the back and I take my nice big scissors and I'm going to come up against my card and trim this off. I need a decent pair of scissors because I'm cutting through two layers of card on one of them's mirror card. That's sticky so I'm putting it well out of the way and then the other end. And that's how you get your strip so it's exactly flush on the ends. Okay, we're getting there. So back to the card. Zoom out again. No wrong way. So I've got my card, I've got my mirror card, I've got my pattern paper, I've got my panel for the middle, which I need the right way up. And then I'll have my topper on there. And we'll have a sentiment as well. So I need to finish making the sentiment now. Again, I'm making it all before I put it together. Okay, sentiment's probably going to go maybe down in this corner. Um, and I did this to test out the foils I'm using. Okay, it was done with not quite the small list of the dies for the fancy squares. It's done with, with that one. It's the second size up. Okay. So I want to put my sentiment on that and I want to use the um, chocolate copper foil to actually do the sentiment. Now, you might be stamping a sentiment, um, but I have got a lovely little sentiment foil stamp here somewhere that I want to use. I know it's here somewhere. Bear with me. Right, I found my sentiment. It was hiding underneath one of, one of my silicon mats. So my next job is to get this positioned on my go press and foil and get this positioned so that it'll fit inside it properly and be nicely centered. So to actually get it in the right place to my go press and foil, I don't like to guess. What I like to do is use a magnet. Now it's a stamp press type magnet, a neodymium magnet. I think this is probably a two centimeter diameter, one millimeter thick, might be one and a half. Okay, and it's covered with some wide masking tape. Okay, you might need to put several bits around if you've got narrower masking tape. So I'm going to use that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my hot foil stamp in place in my frame, which I'm going to cut out afterwards. Okay, and that's important. Don't cut it out first because it makes it very fiddly getting the card lined up on the go and foil. Okay, so I think, I think that will work. Okay, it's only a scrap of card. If it doesn't, I can try a different way. So, I've got that, and as you can see, it doesn't fall off. The magnet holds it. 
it. So now I bring the, let me just get my metal plates out of the way. I bring the GoPro and foil over. Now this is foiling with pop foil stamps, so there's no metal plates. So what I'm going to do is I've got my pop foil stamp with the pattern side down on my card and the magnet holding it. And yes, I do know I need some foil in between. Okay, we'll come to that. So I'm gonna put that on the GoPro and foil. And I've noticed where I'm lining the card up and I'm going against the plastic edge at the bottom. And then I'm gonna slip my finger underneath and slide the magnet off and then take my finger away before it gets too hot. And then I'm gonna take my card back off. And I'm going to leave my hot foil stamp to warm up. Now, somewhere buried on this desk, I've got bits of foil. that will do me for doing my sentiment. That piece will do. Um, there's probably a larger bit somewhere. But it's only a small sentiment. So I'm going to cut myself a piece of foil. I'm going to round off my corners as well. There's my foil ready. The go press and foil has just gone click to say it's warmed up. So now what I do, let me pull it off. Now I'm going to need shim as well. Okay, so obviously I've done lots of foiling, so I'm not going to test this out because I'm fairly confident that I know what it needs. I might be wrong, so I might get caught out and have to do it again. But, so I've got my hot foil stamp, which has already heated up, and I've got my foil on, and I've got my card on. And then I'm going to put a piece of tape at the bottom to hold that piece of card in place. And I've lined it up exactly as it was when I was putting the hot foil stamp down. To say, I've had lots of practice with this, so... I'm fairly sure that's the right number of shims and because I've pulled this off the base and taken time explaining this rather than just quickly putting it all in place as I would normally do I'm going to put this back on the base unit to make sure it is still hot enough and of course it isn't because it's gone click okay so that's going to be very long I can start putting foam pads on here and double-sided tape but I won't bore you with that but if you were waiting that's the sort of thing you could be doing there we are it's gone green so let me roll that through my die cutting machine Now, this may be the smallest hot foil stamp I own. I've got a star and I've got a row of little diamonds that possibly are smaller or in that kind of scale. But I really like the, the size of this and, the, and just for you, it just goes for so many occasions. So there we are. I've peeled the foil off. And so I've got a gold ball border and the chocolate copper sentiment. So now what I need to do is cut it out and then I can put the card together. So my die. So I really don't need to make sure this die is lined up properly. So a couple of pieces of tape.
that's fallen out the die. There's my sentiment. Let's bring the card back. So there we are. There's going to be you know, lots of double sided tape and foam pads everywhere on this. So I think I may probably will put that just at the edge there. Say just for you. Okay, so I'm going to stick that together and just make sure I come back to you to make sure you know what all to stick things down in. Okay, so bear with me again. Okay, so I paused the camera and I have stuck together my base layer of my mirror card and my first layer of pattern paper and I've put my double sided tape and foam pads on everything else. So I've got double sided tape on this layer and I always do my double sided tape in this pattern around the outside. So I start level with one end and I go across and stop far enough from the other end so that the next piece of double sided tape can start there. Okay, it doesn't matter if you end up a little gap um, between the two pieces of tape, that'll hold that fine. Okay, so I always do that in that pattern, and that means I can release a corner. Now, which way up are we going? We're going that way up. So, let me do these corners. It doesn't matter which two corners you do, but it helps your brain if you always do it the same way, because then you 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 don't have to remember which ones are sticky. So that's the only reason I figure out which way I'm going before I start peeling it, so that I know that I'm. My, my brain doesn't have to think too hard about which, which ones are sticky. So I just peel it back. Okay, and I've decided my flowers need to be kind of drooping downwards because they've got really long um, stamen. So they're a fuchsia or something like that. So they're, they're drooping downwards. And that matches with the way that round, way round they are on the backing paper. So I'm going to line that up by eye in the middle. Okay, and I can touch these corners because they're not sticky because I haven't peeled the tape yet. Okay, but by doing it opposite corners like I've done, it means every piece of tape has got an end lifted. Which means I can hold it down and pull the tape out while I'm holding it still. So getting that in, into position, I do find if I do actually get it sticking down a little bit, um, if I twist it, it, it pulls away and doesn't usually damage the card or my pattern paper, if you know what I mean. It's kind of a safe way of doing it. Right, so I think that is nicely centred. I can press that corner down and then if I still need to twitch it a bit to make sure it's straight I can do that so then I can press the other corner down and then I can get a corner of tape Oops. and if you're really unlucky that happens at which point you get a pokey tool <laughs> a nice sharp one and you go fishing underneath for the other end of your tape doesn't happen often, bound to happen today. Right, that's it, Let's lift that end of the tape. There we are, and pull that, that end out. So what should happen is you pull the end of your tape and you gently pull it out and it doesn't break and your card lays nice and flat. Do the same with that one. And do the same with that one. Okay. So that's that layer down, and then the other two layers are on foam pads. So, a million and one foam pads. I've just got somewhere here to put my rubbish. I actually keep a small um, dust pan next to me, and things like foam pads and the backing of the cellar tape go straight into that. It makes it really quick to tidy up afterwards. And all my little bits of foil that I finished with you know, in, in, in my dustpan already. So that will just need tipping into the bin when I finished. Right, okay. 
making sure my flowers are the right way up so I can hold this by the edges by the corners and line it up nice and centrally top bottom side to side and go for it then I've got my fox I like to do my middle pad backing last because it gives me somewhere to put my thumb while I'm turning it round. Okay, so then I can centre this. there and I've put foam pads on the back of my sentiment I've changed my mind about where it's going to go so let me just zoom in a bit so I was going to put it down in that corner let me just turn this around to the camera tip it slightly so I was going to go down there but I've actually decided I'm going to go just down there okay so what I've done because I've, this is all on foam pads and all the different heights and this is going to hang off the edge I've got one pad to start with and then I've got two pads and I've got two pads and then I've got a little stack of three at the end so that's going to come down there okay so let's put that down and then our card will be finished and we've gone all the way from printed sheets foiling, cutting and putting together and obviously it's much quicker when you're just doing it than when you're trying to talk about it at the same time come there there And there is my finished card okay so I'm sure this has turned out to be a quite a long video but to say it's much quicker when you're doing it rather than when you're trying to talk about it at the same time and we've practiced you, you get even quicker still so have fun experimenting with your um, nesting die see what you've got in your stash um, see what works see what doesn't try it out on some playing card to begin with see what works and then have fun with your, your crafting CDs, USBs, DVD ROMs and turn your playing cards into some lovely foil cards. Okay, thank you for watching.